Hey, this is Justin Sibolian from Dirty Honey, and you're watching Lo and Behold. What's the single best piece of advice you've ever received in regards to playing bass in a live band? Uh, and when I was pretty young, uh, a much older drummer, I was kind of asking him the same piece, you know, the same question, and he was told me, you gotta, as a bass player, really focus in on locking in with the drummer's kick. You know, their feel and their kick, and like what kind of pattern they're doing. I'll base, you know, a lot of my bass lines around what the kick is doing. The most important thing really is to just be listening, and paying attention to what everybody else is doing and not just playing for yourself. Which book would you recommend to a novice bass player? Music Theory Volume 1 or Lemmy's White Line Fever? I've never heard of any of those, but I just like the name White Line Fever, so um, I'm gonna go with that. Who's the bass player that inspired you to become one? A lot of great bass players that have inspired me over the years. Chris Dovacelic, I guess, was one of the first, because Nirvana, Flea was really huge for me. There's so many. Paul McCartney, Beatles are my favorite band, so I think Paul McCartney's done. Duck done. I could go on for episode. How do you compose bass parts for a new song? I think the creative process is different for every song. Kind of depends on how the song starts. Some of our songs literally just come out of jams in the room. Sometimes somebody comes up with a riff. So every song is different, but I'm always listening to the vocals and listening to like, you know, what the guitar and the drums are doing and trying to lock everything together, find my moments to speak. I just, that's how I approach every song. It's like, it's a new thing and it's going to require, re require a different process. Do you recall the first time you ever played a bass guitar? Uh, I think it was at a music shop and my dad took me to get one. What was the most difficult moment of your music career? There's been some difficult moments, you know, I think everybody has their ups and downs. The pandemic was really hard on, on everybody in the band. We kind of just broke it as a band. We had our first Billboard Rock number one. Yeah, and then the pandemic shut everything down. We were, um, So I think that was really tough on all of us. I think everybody remembers the hard moments in their career more than the great ones. Those are the ones that really define you and show you what kind of person you are. You released two albums without a music label. Do you think it's a good path for a new band to consider? I think you should try and get the band as far as you can without a record label, but there's definitely things a record label has to offer. And, you know, as much as we don't want to admit it, like there are doors that just certain people can open. And we're really lucky we have an amazing manager who actually used to like run labels. So he had a lot of connections that were able he was able to use to get us on the radio and to get us booking agents, things that a, a record label would normally do for you. But not everybody's going to have access to a manager like we have. We got really lucky. So it really depends on what your situation is and how much control you want to have. We do still maintain a lot of control, whatever path is best for you. But you definitely, whether it's a manager or a label or anybody, you need people that are passionate about what you're doing in your art. That's the most important thing. How do you tell a loud guitar player to turn down? I would never tell a loud guitar player to turn down. I would just turn up louder than him. You're stuck in a small van with the three members of the police on their first US tour. Next to whom would you sit? Uh, I would probably uh, sit next to Andy Summers, the guitar player. A lot of people don't know, but I'm also a classically trained guitar player, and so is Andy. So I feel like we could just kind of geek over over that, I'll play Bach and stuff like that, and I don't think I really actually want to talk to Stig anyways. What bass line that you've written are you most proud of? I really love the bass line to California Dreamin'. I got some really nice um, melodic lines. And there's a song called Gypsy on our last record also. There's like this hammer-on thing that uh, Duff McKagan did, and it's so easy. Flea does on the intro of Around the World. A, a bunch of people have done it, just da 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 like a hammer on thing and I'd always wanted to write a bass line like that. What's the most important thing to remember as a bass player? Just be cool, dude. Just play well. What's your favorite brand of bass guitar? I really love my Seth Lee Jones custom bass that he had built for me. Um, it's like to all my custom specifications. If you're just talking about like famous brands, I love Fender. I've got a P bass with flats on it. And actually I just got one of those ding walls, like the fan frets that sick. I did not expect it, um, but they play like crazy, crazy easy. Like this, I could just do things on them that I can't do on a normal bass, and they are more in tune. Uh, so they're pretty cool. Check them out, Dingwall. Time for rapid fire questions. Jazz or precision? Precision. I can't pe say precision. I'm gonna go with precision. Page or plant? Page. Touring or recording? Love of both, but I really love being in the recording studio. 
Sushi or pizza? Love them both, like my two favorite foods, but probably sushi right now. If you could jam with a drummer, dead or alive, who would it be? I would jam with Bernard Purdy. That motherfucker is bad as fuck. You just gotta hear that, hear that air the hats. I want to, uh, you know what to do. So thanks for checking out this interview and check out Dirty Huddy's new album, Can't Find the Breaks, coming out November 3rd. And if you're in the U.S., we'll be touring around the U.S. from October to December. Also on our headlining tour. Uh, so please come out to a city near you. See you later.